Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gratzler here again for another Adobe InDesign tutorial episode. In this one we're going to talk about adding graphics and images to our designs. In this video we're going to cover the basics of importing and placing images or graphics in a design. We're also going to show you how to resize and manipulate those images really quickly and then also how to wrap text around that because we know in InDesign we have a lot of text sometimes and we want that text to go around some of our graphics. So we'll show you how to do that really quickly and easily. So let's jump into that tutorial and see how it's done. Now that we've learned how to add text to our document, we're going to add some graphics and images to it to kind of enhance the visual aspects of our design. Now I've got a different document here uh, to work with just to give you a little bit more of an understanding of what we're going to be doing and just to show you some more features with working with images and graphics. First thing I'm going to show you over here in our toolbar is this tool right here. It's the square with the X on it. This is the rectangular frame tool. When we're placing an image or a graphic in InDesign, we want to draw an image frame. It helps just like a text box, we draw the text box and then we type in there, it constrains the text to that box. The image frame does the same thing. It will constrain your image to that box. Now, if you want the image to take up the whole document, that's fine. You can place it on there and resize it. But kind of like this one over here, if I click on that, you can see I've got an image frame around this size and the image is within that. So I constrained that image within that image box. If you click and hold on the rectangular image frame tool, you'll see you've got an ellipse and a polygon as well too. So you can create different shapes, but for the most part, uh, we're just gonna stick with the rectangular frame tool for right now. Um, what I've got here is you can see I've got one drawn out already and you can tell that you have a blank image frame box because it has the X in it. That's how you can separate between the text box and the image frame box. What you're gonna do now is once you click on your image frame, you want to place your image. You don't ever want to copy and paste. You always want to place. So you'll go to file and place, just like we did with text. And for this one, we've got this computer kind of desktop graphic to the right. So we're going to do the same computer graphic over here. And I'm going to click open. All right. So you can see where my image frame was. It has constrained that image to that shape, to that box shape. <laughs> but you'll also notice that that's not a really good image to have there. A lot of it's cut off, or maybe you don't see everything you want to see. So right now, I've got a blue bounding box. If I click once, I have a blue bounding box around my image frame. If I double click, you'll see I get this red one out here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see that. And what this is, is this is the bounding box of the actual image itself. So you can see this is the actual size of the image that I've placed in there, but it's just bound to this part right here. So I can, if I hover over the image now, I have this red box, you can see this hand symbol pops up. So I can move that image in that box. So maybe I want more of this printer, right? No, well, that's too far. Maybe I want more of that. Or I just want to kind of split it a little bit. So either one of those works. You can also resize the image from this point. So if I hover in the corner, and hold down shift, I can resize proportionally until it touches the top and touches the bottom. And now I can still move that as well. So that's how you would resize the actual image itself. So again, if I click on it once, this little circle in the middle also helps you move that image, right? So I can click on it once and now my image frame is selected so I can make that bigger or smaller. If I double click, I get the frame of the actual image itself. So that is how you kind of edit, manipulate the image within an image frame. You can also create and draw your own image frames, just like we did with the text tool. Click off on the outside there. I'm going to draw an image frame and we're actually gonna place an image. I have a quote here from Milton Glasser and we're gonna put a photo of him with that. So I'm gonna click and drag right here. And now I have my image box just like that. So this image box is selected and I would do the same process. I would go to file, place, and there's my photo of my man Milton and it'll drop it right in there. 
Perfect. I'm actually going to resize this, make it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you how to use some of the tools to resize and edit our images. So over here, we're going to go to our properties panel. Okay, I'm going to click on this image frame. And you can see I've got transform, appearance, alignment, and I've got two options that we're going to look at right here, text wrap and frame fitting. The first one is frame fitting. So again, this one, it just came in and it plopped itself right inside that image box and it was the correct size. But sometimes you come in and it's bigger than the actual image there. So what we want to do is I'm going to click on the image frame and I've got some options here. It says fill frame proportionally, fit content proportionally, fit content to frame, fit frame to content, center the content or content aware fit. So some of these do different things. You might just have to trial and error and click to see which one you want, but I'm going to click on this first one and you can see it automatically resizes my image because this was fill frame proportionally. So it resized the image and it filled that image frame. If I move that image frame and I click on that same button, it'll resize it again. So I can quickly and easily resize that image to fit within that box. So this is a quick way to do it. Instead of double clicking and trying to do it by hand, this is a really quick and easy tool to do that. You can also edit and move your boxes just like you would in Photoshop and Illustrator with your selection tools. So I can hover over the corners here and I can rotate that image box and get different angles. And just like you saw, I can click and drag and resize the image frame or the image anytime I need to. So there's other ways you can kind of resize that as well with just your basic selection tools. Next, we're gonna look at how to wrap this text. So I'm going to move this image frame. I'm gonna put it over my text right here. And here's the key to how this works. You gotta make sure that you have the image frame selected. And now I'm gonna go down here to text wrap. And right now it says no text wrap, that's what's selected. This first one says wrap around the bounding box. So I'm gonna click on that and you can see that it automatically jumps that text around the bounding box. And I can at any point in time click and move that image and it will automatically adjust. So if I want it right in the center, or if I want it more in the upper right to start the image and then have the text go there, you can do that as well. You'll notice too, if this text hits right up against that image, right? So that might be hard to read if you're looking at a brochure. And remember our text wrap says wrap around the bounding box. So if I were to take this bounding box and just stretch it out a little bit, give it a little bit of breathing room around that image. Now that works a little bit better. I can see that little gap there. So now it's a little bit easier to read than to have it right up against that image, especially a black and white image with black text might make that very difficult to read. So looking at this, you'll see I've got a lot of you know frames and things going on. It's kind of hard to see what this would look like when it's all complete. So there's a really quick shortcut when you're working through things to see what it's going to look like. It's the preview shortcut. It's the W key on your keyboard. If I click on W, I can quickly see what my final design is going to look like. And I want to show you that, especially since I moved the bounding box. Now you can see when you hover over it, those things pop up but they're not there. So it gives you a really great sense of what your final design is going to look like, especially anything that's cut off like this right here, this image is cut off. So what is that actually going to look like? Now I just hit W again and I can come right back to that. You can work inside this preview mode, but you can also quickly just click W and go back to where you were. And finally, we're going to talk about just some basic graphics. So just like over here on the left, I've got a photo in the background and then I've got these kind of light, colored boxes over the top. Sometimes when you're putting text over an image, it can be a little hard to read, especially like maybe a little brochure like this. So you might want to add a little bit of a design element to the background, or maybe you just want to add a design element just to add a little bit of flair to it. So we're just going to use our regular rectangle tool. And we're just going to create a nice fun shape. Maybe just a little rectangle here. And right now, looking at my control panel or even the tool panel, you can see there's no fill and it's just a black outline. So I'm gonna switch those. And now I've got that black fill. I'm gonna go up here to my control panel or I can go to my properties panel over here. 
I'm going to change that to yellow since we got that yellow over there in the background. And there is a really cool graphic or image that I can put on my design very quickly. Some of you are asking, might be asking, well, what if I create something in Photoshop or Illustrator? How do I import that into my design? Just like we did with all these other photos. So any one of these photos could have been something we created in Photoshop. So if you take a photo and you edit it or you make a composite, make sure you save it as a PSD file or a TIFF file. And then you can just do what we did here is draw your image frame and then file place your photo in there. The same is true for an Adobe Illustrator file. So we can not just put in photos, but we can also put in graphics and logos and things of that nature as well too. So again, drawing the image frame and then file placing your AI file. So if you've done it in Illustrator, save it as an AI file, and then you can drop it and place it right in there. So if maybe you can't do as many cool text effects in InDesign, which you really can't, you're kind of limited on that. So maybe you want to do a really cool title for your brochure or for your poster design that you're doing here. So you can do the design or the text in Illustrator, save that file, and then draw your image frame and then drop that image of the text design inside InDesign. So it's a great way to incorporate all three of those programs together. And that's really what it's all about. InDesign is not a creation software like illustrator works with you know creating vectors and photoshop is editing and creating images and rasters this is just for layout so it's a place for you to take all those creative elements and put them together and organize them in a really cool way one last thing i want to show you over here on the right is your layers panel and this works just like it does in photoshop and illustrator right now i have one layer not a good idea. Remember, it's always good to have multiple layers and organize your stuff. But this works just like it would in Illustrator or Photoshop. So if I click on this image frame here, this little blue dot pops up and tells me where that image is. And I can click and move that anywhere I want. Let's say I want this yellow rectangle to go behind this image. So there's my computer JPEG. And then I click on this. And there's my rectangle. So I can click and drag that below the computer. And now it goes behind that image. Quick preview, and that's a really cool little design element. So using the layers panel helps you organize and move your images, your text, and your graphics all over the page. So that's a really great way to keep everything organized. So that's it for graphics and images. In our next one, we're gonna talk about how to take all of this final work and export it and get it ready for print. Thanks for watching.